Welcome to 1987. What does the new year bring? We're still in the boom, but we're on the back side of that explosion. So we're not going to have a situation like the holidays of 1986 where three quarters of the games are among the worst on the system. Mappers become cheap enough that they're commonly used, spelling the doom for the Famicom disk system. The ludicrous password system in one of the most popular games ever released spurs on the development of battery saving. And of course, we're going to see the launches of some big franchises. But first, we have Hinotori Gao no Boken, or Phoenix, Gao's Adventure. Hinotori is one of the most mature works from legendary comic creator Osamu Tezuka. I don't think I could even summarize it properly in the time given for this video. It's not a coherent series. It's more of a collection of stories linked thematically that Tezuka worked on for his entire career. At their core, they're all about cycles of death and rebirth, as well as Tezuka's own relationship with his Buddhist faith. So it's the perfect subject matter for an action platformer. The story in the Famicom game is very loosely adapted from the arc that's been called Karma in English releases. In the game, Gao is a former bandit turned monk who carved the figure of the phoenix. It was stolen and broken into 16 pieces, and now he's out to reassemble them. That shares almost no similarities with the comic, and there's other changes. Gao in the comic is notable for only having one arm. In fact, that's kind of central to the story. In the game, however, he's got two arms, presumably because they just wanted to flip the sprite when you change directions. On his travels, Gao defends himself by throwing chisels. He can toss those straight ahead or upward. But Gao's real strength lies in sculpture. By pressing down and attacking, he creates an onigawara. That's a decorative roof tile shaped like a monster. If you crouch and attack, Gao places this right in front of himself. If he's in the air, then he places the block directly underneath himself. Gao's not very athletic, so you have to use onigawara to get to high places. You have a limited supply of blocks you can place, but hitting an enemy with a chisel turns them into one. Those blocks slide along until they hit a surface and then solidify. But you can collect it, or you can shoot it again to make it rebound back at you. If a block is placed in an inconvenient spot, you can destroy it by throwing a chisel at it, or you can crouch and press jump three times to destroy it. You'll encounter treasure chests as well. They have to be shot to open. And since you can't crouch to shoot, you'll often have to get down a level to hit them. That can be another use for the Onigawara, where you might want to drop off a ledge and then drop one below you so that you can hit a treasure chest. One challenge to the treasure chest is that sometimes they'll just drop out of the sky and you have to strike them on the way down. Inside the treasure chest you can find a money bag that's only worth some points. This shell that extends your life bar by one spot up to a maximum of eight. The effects of the shell last until you die. Then your life bar goes back to normal. A rice ball which fully replenishes your life. A red onigawara that gives you ten more blocks. A makatama that freezes time. A phoenix feather that makes you invincible for a short time. And a mirror that will let you walk through anything. Both invincibility items last for an extremely short period, only about 10 seconds. There's a real danger with the mirror, because you can get trapped inside certain areas. If that occurs, you have to press select to kill yourself. Let's talk about the enemies for a minute. They're all real pains. Spawning seems to be based on how far on the screen you've advanced. And that means when you stand in some spots, they just keep coming forever. Since there's no low attack, that can fill up an area with things you can't hit. The snakes and fish are especially bad about this. 
Two things can happen at the end of the stage. You might see the piece of the phoenix carving sitting out in the open. In that case, there's usually an obstacle you have to deal with. Like these Moai heads destroying all of the terrain in the area. Or you could encounter some bosses. I'd love to give you some tips on them, but really all you have to do is get in their face and fire as fast as possible. Even with a default life bar, you won't have any trouble with them. If you manage to defeat Stage 7, then you go back to Stage 1. The reason for this is Hino Tori takes place in three different time periods. Gao has to locate doorways between each of them. And these doors are not always easy to make out. They're often hidden behind destructible terrain. And even when you uncover one, it can be difficult to tell that it's a door. The worst aspect of this is that there's one stage that's accessible by only one warp. So you have to find this warp zone in order to complete the game. And finding those hidden warps is really the only challenge in Hino Tori. It's not a difficult game, and there's infinite continues. If you knew about the existence of the warps, it would only take you about an hour to beat it from the first time you played it. This is a game with an absolutely incredible presentation and so-so actual gameplay. It looks and sounds amazing, but the actual platforming, the way you use Onigawara, the way that enemies and treasure chests spawn, they don't measure up to the spectacular presentation. Hino Tori doesn't play badly. This is a Konami game, after all. In terms of gameplay, it's just fine. This is a game that isn't too difficult to beat. It's okay to play, but I also feel like once you've beaten it, you wouldn't think about it again. <laughs>